As for Flora, she was still asleep at half past three in the afternoon and would have slept on comfortably enough until tea time, but that she was aroused by a knocking at her door and the excited voice of Mrs. Beetle proclaiming that there were that there was two gentlemen to see her. Have you got them there? asked Flora sleepily. Mrs. Beetle was much shocked. She said, indeed not. This was Mrs. Post's parlor. She said, indeed not. They was, they was in Miss Post's parlor. Well, who are they? I mean, did they tell you their names? One that's Mr. Mybog, miss, and the other's a gentleman who says his name is Neck. Oh, yes, of course. How delightful. Ask them both to wait till I come. I won't be long. And Flora began slowly to dress, for she would not make herself feel ill by bounding vigorously out of bed, even though she was delighted at the idea of seeing her dear Mr. Neck again. As for Mr. Mybug, he was a nuisance, but could be coped with easily enough. She went downstairs at last, looking as fresh as a leaf, and as she entered her little parlor, wherein Mrs. Beetle had, had kindled the fire, Mr. Neck advanced to meet her, holding out both his hands and saying, Well, well, sweetheart, how's the girl? Flora greeted him with warmth. He had already had some conversation with Mr. Mybug, who was looking rather sulky and miserable because he had hoped to find Flora alone and have a lovely long scene with her, apologizing for his behavior last night and talking a lot about himself. He became more sulky at first hearing Mr. Neck address Flora as sweetheart, but after listening to a little of their conversation, he decided that Mr. Neck was the sort of amusing type that calls everybody sweetheart and did not mind so much. Flora instructed Mrs. Beetle to bring them some tea, which soon came, and they sat very pleasantly in the sunlight, which streamed through the window of the little green parlor, drinking their tea and conversing. Flora felt sleepy and amiable. She had made up her mind that Mr. Neck must not go without seeing Seth, and quietly told Mr. Be Mrs. Beetle to send him to the parlor as soon as he could be found. But apart from this decision, she was not worrying about anything at all. Are you over here looking for English film stuff? Are you over here looking for English film stuff, Mr. Neck? asked Mr. Mybug, eating a little cake that Flora had wanted for herself. That's so. I want to find me another Clark Gable. Yeah, you wouldn't remember him, maybe. That's twenty years ago. But I have him at a Sunday film club re repertory show in a film called Mounting Passion, said Mr. Mybug usually. Do you know the work of the Sunday film club repertory people at all? I'll buy it, said Mr. Neck, who had taken a dislike to Mr. Mybug. Well, I want a second Clark Gable. See, I want a big, husky, stiff that smells of the great outdoors with a golden voice. I want passion. I want red blood. I don't want no sissies. See, sissies give me a pain in the neck, and they're beginning to give the great American public a pain in the neck, too. Do you know the work of Limp? asked Mr. Mybug. Never heard of him, said Mr. Neck. Thank you, sweetheart, to Flora, who was feeding him cake. You know, Mr. Mybug, we got a responsibility to the public. we got to give them what they want, yet it's got to be clean. Boy, that's difficult, I'll tell you. It's difficult. I want a man who can give them what they want, yet give them it so that don't leave a taste in their mouths. He paused and drank tea. The sunshine, vivid as a Klegalite, revealed every wrinkle of his melancholy little monkeyish face, and lit fresh red carnation in his button and lit the fresh red carnation in his buttonhole. For Mr. Neck was a great dandy who usually changed his buttonhole twice a day. I want a man to fetch the women, he went on. I want a new Gary Cooper, but let's see, that's twenty years ago. Only more ritzy. Someone who can look good in a tuxedo and yet handle one of them old world plows. Say, I've seen four plows since I've been all over this trip. Well, who have I got? I got Tech Jones. Yeah, well, Tech's a good kid. He can ride all right. But he's got no body urge. I got Valentine Orlo. Well, he looks like a wop. That won't stand for no they won't stand for no more wops since poor Morelli went to the chair in forty two. No wops no wops is off. I got Peregrine Howard. He's a Britisher. No one can't say his first name, name right, so he's no good. There's Slake Fountain. Yeah, I'll say there is, too. We keep a gang of hoodlums on their toes at 20 a week, each to sober him up every morning before he comes to the set. Then there's Jerry Badger, the sort of nice egg you'd like your kid's sister to marry, but nothing to him. Nothing, but nothing to him. Nothing at all. Well, what do I get out of it? Nothing. I gotta find somebody, that's all. Have you seen... Have you ever seen Alexander the Finn? Uh, ever seen Alexander Finn? Asked Mr. Mybug. I saw him in Pepin's last film, La Plume de Matante, 
in Paris last January. Very amusing stuff. They wore glass clothes, you know, and moved in time to a metronome. Oh, yeah? said Mr. Neck. A frog, eh? Frogs is all under, fi under five feet. I want a big husky fella. The kind of fella that would look good cuddling a kid. Is there another cup, sweetheart? Flora poured him some. Yeah, he went on. I seen that film in Paris, too. It gave me a pain. Gave me a lot of new dope, though. What not to do and all that. And I've met Pepin, too. The poor egg's cuckoo. He is much admired by the younger men, said Mr. Mybug, daringly glancing at Flora for approval. That helps a whole heap, said Mr. Neck. Then your interest in the cinema, Mr. Neck, is extremely, com is entirely commercial? I mean, you think nothing of its aesthetic possibilities? I got a responsibility. If your frog friend has to fill $15,000 worth of movie seats every day, he'd have to think of a better stunt than have a lot of guys wearing glass pants. He paused and reflected. Say, though, that's an idea. A guy buys a new tuxedo, see? Then he's offered some ritzy old eggs, see? A magician or something. And this old egg puts a curse on him. Well, this egg, this guy, the guy in the tuxedo, goes off to a swell party, and when he comes in, all the girls scream, that kind of stuff. Well, he can't see his pants is turned to glass by this other old egg, the magician, see? And he says, what the hell? And all the rest of it. Yeah, that's an idea. While he was speaking, Seth had come in silently with his graceful pantherous tread to the door of the room and now stood there looking down inquiringly at flora she smiled across at him motioning him to be silent mr neck's back was toward the door so that he could not see seth but when he saw flora smile he turned half round and looked across the doorway to see who, to whom the gesture was directed and he saw seth a silence fell the young man stood in the warm light of the declining sun his bare throat and boldly molded features looking as though they were bathed in gold. His pose was easy and graceful. A superb self-confidence radiated from him, as it does from any healthy animal. He met Mr. Neck's stare with an impudent stare of his own. His head lowered and slightly forward, he looked exactly what he was. The local sexually successful bounder. Millions of women were to realize in the next five years that Seth could be transported in fancy to a Welsh mining village, a shoddy north country seaside town, a raw city in the plains of the Middle West, and still remain eternally unchangeably by the local irresistible bounder. Eternally and unchangeably, the, irresist the local irresistible bounder. Is it any wonder that Mr. Neck broke the silence by flinging up his hand and saying in a hoarse whisper, That's it, sweetheart! That's got it! Hold it! And Seth was so soaked in movie slang that he held it for another second or so of silence. Flora broke it by saying, Oh, Seth, there you are! I wanted Mr. Neck to see you. Oh, this is my cousin, Seth Starkadder. He's very interested in the talkies. Mr. Neck is a producer, Seth. Mr. Neck, forgetful of everything else, was craning forward with his head slightly bent downward to hear Seth speak. And when that deep, warm drawl came, pleased to meet you, Mr. Neck, Mr. Neck looked up with an expression of such relief and delight that it was just as though he had clapped his hands. Well, well, said Mr. Neck, surveying Seth rather as though Seth were his dinner, and as indeed he was to be for some years to come. How's the boy? So you're a fan, eh? You and me must get acquainted, huh? Maybe you'd thought of, of going in for the game yourself. Mr. Mybug tilted comfortably back in his chair, choosing a little cake to eat and prepared to enjoy the sight of Seth being roasted. But he had, as we know, backed the wrong horse. Seth scowled and drew back. Mr. Neck almost patted his face with rapture as he observed how Seth's every mood was reflected like a child in his countenance. No, no, I'm not kidding, he observed amiably. I mean it. Would you like to go on the talkies? A great cry broke from Seth. Mr. Mybug lost his balance and fell over backwards, choking with cake. No one noticed him. All eyes were on Seth. A glory lit his face. Slowly, lingeringly, the words broke from him. More than anything else in the world. Well, ain't that dandy, said Mr. Neck, looking around proudly for agreement and support. He wants to be a movie star, and I want to make him one. What do you know about that? Usually, it just it's just the other way about. Now, sweetheart, get your grip, and we'll be off. We're catching the Atlantic Flyer from Brighton to, at 8 tonight. Say, though, what about your folks, huh? What about Mama? Will she need squaring? I will tell you about that, Earl. Seth, go, go and pack a bag with everything you need for the journey. Put on a big coat. You are going to fly, you know. And it may be cold at first. 
Seth obeyed Flora without a word, and when he had gone, she explained his circumstances to Mr. Neck. So it's all right if Grand so it's all right if Grandma don't give it the raz, eh, huh? Well, we must go out quiet, that's all. Tell Grandma not to fuss, we'll send her five grand out of the first picture he makes. Oh boy. And here he smote Mr. Mybug, who is still choking over his little cake. I got him, I got him. What do you say his name is, Seth? What do you say his name is, Seth? That's a sissy sort of a name, but it'll do. It's kind of different. Keep some guessing. Oh boy, wait till I get him a tuxedo. Wait till I start his publicity. We must find a new angle. Let's see. Maybe he better be shy. No, poor Charlie Ford ran that to death. Maybe he hates women. Yeah, that's it. He hates women and he hates the movies. Like Kelly does. Oh boy, that'll fetch him. And it'd take more than anyone's grandma to stop me now. And that is the end of chapter 17.